But now, I thought you told me that um, you went on a date once with Dad's brother Daryl. Oh yeah, but, yeah. Before I met your dad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Actually, probably if it hadn't been for knowing Daryl, I probably wouldn't have met your dad because Daryl was one who I think went to Newton to meet him when they because the National Guard <laughs> unit was stationed in in Newton and they had an armory over there and Daryl went over to pick him up. And so they came to the skating rink together. Yeah, Daryl, my, bro my brother Howard was working construction at building the uh, college buildings that summer, and Daryl was too. And um, evidently Howard was talking about how, I, how me and my boyfriend from Lador had broken up just, I don't know, that well that same summer. Well. And so Daryl asked me to go for a date. So, but I think I had two dates with him and <laughs> I, don't, don't worry, Daryl's never gonna hear this, so he, <laughs> he, had, he, had, he had a temper. Uh, the, the first date was all right. I went to a movie or something. And um Second day, went to the uh, A&W root beer stand. It was an outdoor one, you know. In Grinnell? Yeah. Was it? They had car hops. And yeah, but, and, anyway. and, well, I mean, they was there when I was a kid. Oh, the same one? Okay. On Highway 6? Yeah. Okay. Well, no, it was on 146 as you came through Grinnell. Oh, okay, because A&W, when I was a kid, was on Highway 6. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, over here. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, this was on 146. Um, there was a carload of boys parked next to us and there was I don't know what was said can't remember between those boys and Daryl but they were arguing and boy he was Daryl was out of that car and he was gonna fight him all of them I think there were four of them I mean oh well no yeah and, so, yeah. and I think it was that night he asked for me if I would go steady and I just said no, I know my dad won't let me. <laughs> and so, that so that was it. That was and then you met um, uh, Dad through Daryl. How long after that? Just not long after that, right? You met Dad at not long after your last oh, date with yeah, Daryl. Yeah, actually, yeah, because it was it was the same summer. It so, but then you so <laughs> you went steady with Dad. <laughs> so Daryl knew you were a liar, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> but I think he, I think, okay. he met, I think he met Dixie that same time. Hey, hey Dad, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't look it up, okay? Okay. Oh, there you go. Um, nothing. So, um, you, you married Dad like right after high school? Yes. Yeah. Well, he gave me he gave me a diamond ring when I was a junior. Oh, you got engaged yeah. before? Well, you graduated. No, a senior. I was engaged during my senior. Was that time? Did, were a lot of your friends engaged in high school? Um, I would think I was the well, maybe the. Uh, I think I was the only one. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Wow. But it wasn't uncommon. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's see. And then, right, how long after you guys got married before you had Pam? Um, it was... Well, let's see. Married on May 18th, and Pam was born on May 23rd, year later. So, wow. Mm -hmm. And then you had a child basically almost every two years after that, except for between uh, Marcia and Janet. That was three years. Um, and Dad was... What was Dad doing at the time when you guys got married? What was he... He was working in the United Grocery Store. I didn't... Store. And, and he, then he ran the. Uh, well, he was working in the food department. Yes. And did you have a job? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was I your job? Uh, Ash, I got a job just like a week after I got married. I think it was uh, um, working for Lawrence B. Peterson, the attorney. And you were a secretary. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I remember growing up, uh, you had those Gregs. G R E G G. Yeah. Oh, handbook. Right. Sten mm -hmm. Stenographers. Yeah. Because I knew you knew your shorthand. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, and did you uh, quit that job then after, like right before uh, you gave birth? Or? Um, 
No, I, go, I went back after Pam was born. Uh, I think I stayed home for six weeks or a couple months or something like that. And then I found um, a lady who would take care of her. So I went back. Um, and I think I worked. Maybe I just. Thank you. I think I worked for another, another year after that. But I went back. Um, well, he needed help, especially during income tax time. So, I can't remember what month I went back. Maybe I stayed. Maybe I stayed home a little longer than that. But Mrs. Eames took care of him, and and. Because uh, you you did not work um, on an outside job the whole time I was growing up. No. When did you stop working on an outside job? Oh. Just probably before Shirley was. Maybe I quit after the income tax time. I think I went back for a second income tax time, and then when I got pregnant with Shirley, I, I think I quit then. Okay, yeah. we're gonna move this closer. Okay. So. Uh, all right. Um. And then I, I did go to work for the people who raised um, had a chicken business um, uh, grading eggs cart uh, car eggs mm. and cartons How uh, they they just lived like a mile west of us leases and leases I did oh I just I don't know a few months oh. yeah something like that and I raked corn for decalb you um, raked uh, yeah during the harvest season you they, they, um, well they it was for seed corn and um, um, I drove in the Grinnell and um, after it was done milking, I knew kids were in, it was in the fall, um, the corn, they would put the ear corn in these big bins, and then after it was dry enough, then they would shell it, and it would, the corn wouldn't all fall, so you had to rake it toward the sheller, and they, so hired, they hired women to do that, so I did that, did that for, for That was after I was born. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I didn't know you, you you had a job outside the farm. Well, right? it was just seasonal, you know. Well, I didn't know you did that at all. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was dirty work, but mm -hmm. you had to cover your hair and everything because it was all this corn chaff was flying all over the place. So after you and Dad married, you actually lived with Ben C. Not Ben uh, C. Ben Buck. Ben Buck. Ben Buck. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Ben C. That's a different story. Yeah, story. well, um, yeah, because. We, I guess we knew Shirley was on the way, and the trailer, we just had the trailer house, you know. So Pam's crib was right in the living room with a tiny trailer. Okay, so you lived in a trailer. It was it was smaller than might have might have been about as big as this room, something like this. And that was where you and Dad lived right after you got married. Yeah. And you guys didn't live together at all before you got married, of course. Yeah. So you did not. As soon as you were married, you moved into the trailer together. Yeah. And he didn't occupy it before then either. And then you lived there up until Shirley was born. Oh no! Well, or it, right was, uh, it was probably I think it was maybe winter time or something like that. We moved in. And then Shirley you, wasn't born yet. And you moved in with Ben Buck. Uh huh. Yeah. And he was a an older guy. He was a widower. Okay. Yeah. And it was a so you lived in the whole. You shared the house with him. Mm -hmm. You guys shared all the yeah, rooms. We had. A, we had the downstairs bedroom. It was a nice old house, really. Um, and he had there were several bedrooms upstairs, and he slept upstairs. And I, I did the cooking, um, um, and we paid for. He he furnished. He furnished the meat, and we bought the rest. I bought the rest of the groceries, unless oh. he wanted some for something for himself. We didn't have to pay rent. Oh, yeah. Wow. So how did that? How did, how did you guys meet him? Um, how did that? Well, he, Ben was friends with my parents, and uh, he had had a couple living with him, um, married couple living with him, and they decided to move into Grinnell, and so he was looking for someone else, to, someone to take their place. So it was just someone to help with the expenses. No, just someone to clean clean the house and, and, and cook. Cook. cook, him, cook. Wow. Although he could cook himself, but. Um, Cause, so you didn't have to pay any utilities. Um, Just you didn't have to pay any rent. You said. Well, 
method of manners. Yeah. yeah. I think there was Kenneth had bought a cow and because Ben had it was a farm. And so there was there was a building for the cow and Kenneth did the milking in the morning and Ben did it at night. So had one cow that and you milked. And a separator in the basement. So we separated the milk so and Ben loved to make homemade cottage cheese with um, he separated the, uh, the cream from the milk. milk. Uh -huh. And so the cream was taken to town and sold. Mm -hmm. With one cow, wow. Uh -huh. And then, yeah. um, then after, how long did you live with Ben um, Buck? Let's see, we found, your dad wanted a farm, so we found a farm over by Kellogg to rent, and, and that's where Gary was born. So we lived with Ben for, oh, probably a year and a half or something like that. So, and wh where was this? It was right on 146. The house is still there. In fact, somebody's making it look a little better than it is. Um, south of town? Uh, you go west and then north. And it's probably halfway, halfway on your way to Newburgh. Oh, north of town. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and his family then had um, a son and daughter who were, gro who were grown. In, and, well, Harold Buck it was his son, and he lived up the road. But his daughter lived in Missouri, and they would come and stay for a week, the whole family. Uh, with him, oh. mom and her, his daughter and her husband, and like four kids. Yeah. Well, you were living there too. Yeah, Ooh, okay. but then I did, didn't have to do very much because you know she did. She cooked for mm -hmm. her family too. Yeah. So you were only there there for only like a couple years. Oh yeah, probably not even that. Okay, yeah. and then you moved to Kellogg. Yeah. And um, how long did you live there? Because that wasn't. That too long. <laughs> but you didn't, that wasn't the only... It was a cold, cold house. Yeah. So like that wasn't the house you lived in right before you moved to the dairy farm, was it? No. 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 We lived at Sawyer's. At Sawyer's farm of Gilman. Gilman. Okay, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. um, I, I always recall the kids talking about the house in Gilman, and yeah, of course I don't have any... Because Marsha was born at Gilman, so Gary, Gary was the only one born at the Kellogg farm. And, uh, but, it, but it was a cold house. We had a... We had an oil burner in the dining room, a tiny oil burner in the kitchen, and a coal stove in the living room, and just oh, just a register in the ceiling for, oh man. Was, of course, the, the fire would die out in that coal stove before morning, and so the house would just be colder than really be darn. So wait a minute, so um, Pam was born in the trailer, uh -huh. Shirley was born at, at Ben's, Gary was born at Kellogg, uh -huh. Marsha was born in Gilman. Martian. While you were in Gilman? Martian. And Janet. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I was born yeah. when you were at the dairy farm. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you were in Gilman for the longest out of all those except yeah. for the dairy farm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And you say you're a Kellogg boy. Like, yeah. Year, year and a half. Okay. Well, you guys moved around a lot. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, that was like I, almost but, every but, two years you moved. But that people did that. Farmers, farmers would move, I mean, because they were renting. Uh, for crop shares, you you didn't even have to pay pay cash rent. You would share the corn and the beans, whatever you grew. Um, half of that went to the landlord. Huh. It was great. It was grain share at okay. that time. So so dad, the only time he wasn't a farmer was when he was working at the at grocery, store? grocery store. Grocery mm store. -hmm. And what was his job there again? You said? Uh, well, he, uh, he worked in the fruit department, stocking the fruit. He had, he had a guy working with him too, and then he also ran the cash register. But he, he when we, and uh, and he did that when we lived at Vans. That's what he did. Oh. And uh, then he still did that um, when we farmed at Kellogg because we it was wasn't that big of a farm. It was only like I don't know eighty acres, I think. Which isn't very big, but he milked a few cows. But he had milk by hand. We didn't have milk. I don't know how many. And he worked at the grocery store. Yeah, he milked in the morning and night, and went worked at the grocery store in between. So he didn't stop working at the grocery store until he went to Gilman. Right. Well, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Wow, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and the United Grocery Store is now where Fairway is. Um, no, it's where uh, Popeyes Pizza is. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, now you told me a story about um, Dad shooting a neighbor's horse. Yeah, that was at the that was at the Gelman farm. Okay. Um, let's see. 
And who is the neighbor? Um, Ruthie and um, Cooling, Vernon Cooling. Ruthie and Vernon Cooling. And I went to school with both of them, you know, so played basketball with Ruthie and um, they were they were in a grade behind me, both of them were in the same grade. They went to school together and got married and uh, had family together. And uh, uh, the horse had gotten out, it was this, that the times of when the horse got out were at, after dark. I don't know, it must have been poor fence or something. And uh, uh, evidently the corn had just been picked because the, the crib, both sides of the crib were full, but there was, and there was enough left over that your dad had put it in the driveway of the crib and put snow fence up at the, both ends to keep the corn from, you know, so it would stay mm -hmm. in between the halves of the crib. And the horse came. Uh, and was standing there outside the, the snow fence, you know, picket fence. Where, you know, okay. Remember what snow? Oh, fence sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eating it, it, the corn. wire mesh with with pickets through stuck yeah. through. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And uh, of course, it's only about this high, so the horse could easily reach it. And uh, um, your dad got the gun the first time and and shot over the horse's head and scared it, and it went out the drive and toward home. I, I suppose. I suppose it went. And I don't know how much later it was that it came back a second time and uh, after dark. And of course, we had the one yard light, um, but you had to turn it on. It wasn't this, you know, on all the time thing. Mm -hmm. um, and he got the gun out again, and I, I warned him that he shouldn't do that, you know. And he said, well, I'll, I'll just fire over it. And, uh, well, he hit it. And the horse ran, took off and ran. And, uh, so this is a shotgun, right? Um, Not yeah. a rifle, right? Yeah, it's a shotgun. I'm pretty okay. sure. A rifle would go carry too far. Um, anyway, um, and but there was snow on the ground, um, and this would have been before. And Janet was born November 10th, um, so it had to be in like October. Oh, so maybe, this maybe, even like sep maybe even September. So pretty much right before Jan was born. Then. Yeah. yeah. You were you were After you were morning. very pregnant with her. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. And um, uh, oh, what's now? I think I don't know how Kenneth knew the vet was down there. The vet. I was thinking that. I, I'm not too clear on this. I, I, it just seems like, like he knew that that was there. So neither you or Dad knew that he hit I the think, horse I until... Think your, I, your dad saw blood in the snow on the way out, out the driveway. Oh. On the driveway from the crib. So the next the, morning, yeah, when it was light morning. out, he saw blood in the I snow. Know, I think that's how it was now. Okay, and then... Um, I don't know. And this is like their only horse, right? Yeah. This is a horse that was necessary t for them to do work. Oh no, or? no, I think it was just a, a pet. Oh okay. Yeah, something for the kids to ride. But it was so it was someone's pet. Okay. Yeah, because I think Ruth always, I think they had a horse when she was growing up, and okay. Yeah. Um, and I and I, I told him that that why don't you go talk to Vernon about it? You know, tell him that the horse was getting out. And he didn't want to. He, 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 in fact, he didn't even answer. Yeah. And it, that's what he should have done. Well, Dad uh, is doesn't like confrontation yeah, with yeah. people other than yeah. his family. It seems. I mean, like with us yeah. kids and yeah. whatever, oh, he would yeah. confront us. But yeah. with 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 people outside of the family, he would he would say, "Oh, I'm going to talk to that so and so, whatever." He, if he was mad, but then he wouldn't do it. Yeah. And well, and it, but he never, he never wanted anybody to think bad of him. He wanted to be known as the nice guy, the good neighbor. Yeah. yeah. So, do do you think they knew that he shot him, the, yeah, their horse? Yeah. Now I know he did because I talked to Vernon a few months ago. I didn't know this. You, yeah. Wow. That wasn't more than a few months ago. Because well, the last time I talked to you about this, you hadn't talked to it when you first um, when, when you told me the story, you know. Years ago, a couple years ago. Good thing you're not waiting much longer to ask me these questions. <laughs> it's not getting easier. Um, I, I, I took him aside and I, I said, 
did you know that Kenneth was the one who killed your house or horse? And he said, oh yeah. He, he said, I traced the blood back to your driveway. Did Dad try to hide the blood at all? I mean, well, he, I think Vernon saw it before he had a chance to. Even if, no, I don't think he, maybe in our driveway he did. I'm I was going to say, because that would be a dead giveaway. Yeah, but I don't remember, I don't remember that part. So if, if Dad didn't... I would imagine he kicked snow over the, the blood spots in the driveway after he saw them. Because you either need to tell the person that, you know, because obviously he, you know, you're either going to tell the person that you did it, or you got to try to hide the fact, mm -hmm. basically, or yeah. Yeah. Fess, fess up or, or yeah. Yeah. try to hide it. And he didn't fess up, so obviously I was thinking maybe he tried to hide it. And you think maybe he did try to hide it, but it was too late, he'd already seen the blood. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so when Janet was born, and the doctor told you that she had Down syndrome, now, didn't you tell me that you thought Dad yeah. thought that it was because of the stress you yeah. felt yeah. from that incident mm -hmm. where you shot the horse? Yeah. And so how did, did he tell you that he thought? Yeah, uh -huh. he said, I did, he said, I wonder if um, what happened with the horse is the, the reason Janet is the way she is. And, but, but, the, but the doctor explained to us how that happens, you know, that, that, that extra chromosome is, has nothing to do with outside influences. So, so at the time that he so told you that so Janet I, so, had Down so syndrome... Said, so I said, no, that, that's not possible. Um, so did they explain what are the causes of Down syndrome? I mean, we know it's the, you know, the 23rd chromosome. Right, but exactly what causes that twenty third oh, chromosome no. to? No. Did they? He did not no, talk no. about that. No. Well, see, that's what I'm wondering. If I mean, everything has a cause. I mean, we know that the twenty third chromosome causes Down syndrome, but what causes the twenty third chromosome? So I'm thinking, Dad was under the idea that stress or something could cause you know that twenty third chromosome to occur. Oh, I don't think that part of it entered his mind. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking. Because okay, nowadays, I think, um, yeah. oh, here, I'm he, wasn't, he wasn't getting, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's I, just, <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> that's okay. So, um, <laughs> when I was in high school, I did a paper about Down syndrome, and I think one of the things that, um, well, you know, uh, age of the mother, yeah. but but also the father's. Uh, doesn't the father's sperm have know. something missing? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, okay. But you know, isn't young young women have Down syndrome too? Down yeah. syndrome children too. Sure. Because because yeah. Harlan's um, wife Debbie was uh, young when she had Aaron. How old was she? Only twenty three when Janet was born. Okay. How old were you when Janet was born? Uh, well, let's see here. Because you weren't very old either. I no, mean, you were. No, right? Yeah, yeah. I was young. Gee, yeah, I had all my kids. You know, in my. Uh, 20s and early 30s, so right. yeah, yeah, I was young. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, okay. So, um, your relation, your marriage with Dad was not, you know, how would you, well, <laughs> how would you actually, characterize that's, that's your? When we lived at Gilman, was when it, when the bad started, because uh, he's, you know, when it was typical when farmers needed cash for something to pay a, a bill, you would take a load of corn into the uh, ear shelled corn into the elevator and sell it for cash and you could pay your bills and um, and and your dad did that one day and he didn't wait for the check um, he needed to get home and do some work and, and that's pretty typical too you farmers didn't always wait for it to have it tested and weighed and get your check and um, so the next I don't know next day or so you or two, he went up to Newburgh to the elevator and got his check, and and it w he was surprised how little it was, or that it was less than he figured on. It was because there was moisture; it was damaged. The corn was damaged; it was a little spoiled. You know, evidently, it, um, of course, then they didn't have dryers, bins with dryers in them. You know, it was just nature, you know, dried by nature, and um, and he was mad. He didn't show it to my dad. I mean, he didn't. What he should have done because your dad was the one who was dad running was the elevator. Yes. right. He should have stayed to see it tested. You know, 
But, um, and my dad isn't, wasn't a cheater. I mean, he wouldn't have been employed by the elevator lot that long if he'd done business that way, for crying out loud. And he was just madder than hell. Well, what was your dad's relationship like with 